Now, for a very special Christmas edition of the show, Tasmina and I were, were talking about who are the guests we've never had on the show and who are the ones we don't want to have on the show. So we've invited everybody along, from the President of the United States to the judges of Strictly Come Dancing. So join us on Christmas Eve on The Alex Salmon Show, on air and online. Welcome to our Christmas special edition of the Alex Salmon Show. Today we interview everyone from the President of the United States to the judges of Strictly Come Dancing. Thanks to the impressionist magic of Lewis MacLeod and Kate Robbins, we will talk to everyone you ever wanted to see on this show and quite a few of the people you haven't wanted to see. Yes, we call into the White House to see the last Trump sound off. I am not a loser, not a loser. And we also look at in Brussels, while England waves a less than fond farewell to Europe. Or is it au revoir? Angela Merkel here. Nein, es kaputt. But first, your messages on last week's show in Europe, featuring Edwina Curry, Angus McNeil MP, and Mike Nesbitt, member of the Northern Irish Assembly. We've had lots of messages in about an old lang syne to Europe. But first, we want to say a huge congratulations to a friend of the show, Talia Jansen, who last week raised nearly £5,000 for the charity Buses for Homeless, plus delivered 100 Christmas sacks to homeless people on London streets. Buses for Homeless joins many charities like Shelter in Crisis, doing their utmost to ensure some festive cheer to the most vulnerable in our society. Well done, Talia. Well, first we hear from Lynn Finlinson, who says, Great show. Brexit will really help Scottish independence. The sooner the better. Donald Gillis says, I'm still chuckling at how Edwina is trending. Stay safe, all. I think Donald's referring to something that wasn't in the show, but something else controversial that Edwina was tweeting. Uh, and Abadena says, does really Brexit going to benefit the UK? Time will tell. But how many years to wait for evaluation of Brexit benefit for the Britons? Evan Sonia says, I agree. We should be able to trade freely with each other. Perhaps the EU can relax their laws. It's about coming and going with each other. John Huey says, race to the bottom. There go all the standards, especially workers' rights. And Marlon June Melville says, we've already agreed what they are, and now only haggling about the price. There is no such place as Europe. Donald Clues says, Edwina makes the case for Scottish independence. That'll be a surprise to Edwina Curry. <laughs> and Alison Rooney for Sive says, Scotland's already independent. We're just waiting on the paperwork. And now we're delighted to be joined by Lewis MacLeod and Kate Robbins. Also known as President Trump and the First Lady Melania. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us on. Great job. Great job. You're looking beautiful, Taz. You're a 10. Alex, you're a 10 stop too. Stop flirting. Will you stop flirting, Donald? Always I the can't flirting. help it, Always Melania. Oh, have you packed yet? Have you packed your bag yet? Well, you know, I've you packed, packed my toothbrush. I've packed the hair oil and my tin of Dulux Super Glow Orange Haze. What, for your face makeup? Yes, well, that you need to on. get more than that packed. Hey, Donald, I've been waiting to ask you this for a while. How come you got beat? You know, it's all fake news, Alec. The whole thing, it's... I don't know who does the calculations, possibly Diane Abbott, but we don't know. It's just fake news. It's a disaster. It's a calumnous thing. It's an aberration, and it's braggadocious. It's all of the words that Nigel Farage taught me. I am pleased because it means that maybe I get to see more of my friends in Slovenia. I want to get out of here now. Where are you going to go, First Lady? Well, I'd like to go back to my homeland, I think, and see some friends. You know, everybody's false in America. Everyone, including him, this husband of mine. I'm sick to death of him. You know, I, I, I'm looking forward to the summer. Let's get this bug out the way. Let's, Melania, she wants to go great. I'm looking forward to Wimbledon, strawberries and cream, the best Vegas strippers they got on offer. They're amazing. 
And Donald, are you going to be gracing us with your presence back in the old country of Scotland? I see you've got our mountains behind you. It's a great job. I'm going to buy this place. You know, this is God's country, and He can. You know, it's, it's he's, le he's loaning me the lease. I'm I'm so Scottish. Another golf course, Haggis. Nobody more Haggis than me. So, First Lady, are there chances that you might not be staying together then once you leave the White House? You're joking. You what do you think I want to stay with these men? Of course I want to be with him. I am looking at divorce lawyers as we speak. Haha, <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I am very much in love with my husband. Will you both be at the inauguration ceremony of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? I'm gonna kick Joe Biden's stick away. I'm gonna make him fall over the podium. I'm gonna give him Don't another so... moon boot for the left leg. No. Don't be so nasty, Donald. Don't be so nasty to old Joe. He can't do an oath. He can't sign in. Let's hear from Joe and Kamala, then. Well, you know, hey, man, come on. Hey, live and let live, Joe, huh? I can't I'm only going to be president it. for two You're weeks. You're going to be president. Oh, uh, Kamala, be honey, president. thank you so much. But Kamala, I was so impressed by your uh, inauguration speech. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the trouser suit was the most important thing for me. Getting that right, the white trouser suit, the way I looked, I was really, really impressed with myself. I think I came across as a really stylish woman, and I think I'm going to do great guns with this guy. It's going to be great, Joe. You're going to be president. Yeah, I can lead the country from the home. It's great. I've reached the metallic age. Gold in my teeth, silver in my hair, and no lead in my pencil. And I've got a limp, limpy Joe. Ha <laughs> oh, ha. It's going to be great. Joe, don't be hard on yourself, honey. Come, as a woman of color, can I say how wonderful it is for the United States of America to have the first woman of color, first female vice president of the USA. And I particularly enjoyed your debate with Mike Pence, where you repeated a line often, which rings true with us women, which is, I'm speaking. Well, you know, when I speak, nobody else should speak. And uh, Mike Pence, he's quite rude. And uh, I like debating uh, with anyone, but uh, it was nice to put the man in his place. And um, of course, being a woman of color and the first ever vice president, and it is a great honor, and it was a great honor to make Mike Pence look as small as possible. <laughs> now, president Biden, or upcoming President Bi Biden, uh, some people are suggesting that you're just keeping the presidential seat warm for Kamala, who'll be taking over before air long. Hey, man, I'm from Scranton. Anything goes, huh? I'm looking forward to some bowls of lentil soup wherever I get served them. I don't care if Kamala comes in and does a great job or a, like, you know, Elvira, she comes in and waves her magic wand. Who am I to argue, huh? Come on, man. I would love to take over from you, Joe. Anytime you get too sick or old, you know <laughs> I'm there. You bet. I don't even know how to wear a mask. If you notice, the bit that you press over there is under here. And, the, you know, I'd be as well just wearing laces around my face. I don't know. Come on, man. But you're so cute, Joe, with your little boot on. You're so cute. Oh, uh, thank you. You know, I like running up to the podium. You notice my little jog? I'm going to have to wait a few months before I do that. But I can sort of get one for the other leg and do RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you'll be both nurturing the special relationship with the, with the United Kingdom, or what's left of it. And I wonder uh, if we can turn then, therefore, to, to the Prime Minister, Mr Johnson. This is a difficult time of the year. And I'd like to say to the people of the greatest of Isles, the British Isles, that we must be patient, but let that not diminish a celebratory Christmas. Get the red wine out, and, uh, and if you like me, you'll spill it everywhere. Just say to yourself, carpet DM. Seize the carpet fibers. Have a good Christmas as best we can. Whatever tier you're in, <laughs> tiers before bedtime, tier four, tier five, it sounds now like we're advancing a game on the Xbox or the PlayStation. I don't know what sector I'm in, but whatever you're doing, have a safe and foie, foie, foie Christmas. But, of course, you've got a good team around you, Prime Minister Johnson. Uh, I mean, Priti Patel at the Home Office is a very strong woman indeed. The truth is, I do not know if I'm coming or going. 
going or coming. I do not know what is going on. All I know is that we are going to deliver Brexit and we are delivering the vaccine and then we'll know whether we're coming or going. Um, but apart from that, it's all a bit of a mess. And in terms of the vaccine, do you both have plans to encourage the, the public to take their vaccines by having yours live on air? I would absolutely do this for my country. And I would hope that Mr Johnson, Boris, would too. Will you be coming or going, Boris? Yeah, I'd like to say to Pretty and, in fact, everybody, this is not a taser. We do not need the Prime Minister of the country to stand in front of people and take a jab in the neck uh, of this wonder drug, uh, especially uh, when it's so close to Christmas. Uh, me taking anything is, is, is quite a sight to behold. Uh, a carry, uh, not a carrier, has been feeding me under the door at number 10. So you really don't want me to be seen imbibing anything. I think this is a private matter. I think we should be doing it behind closed doors and, uh, and, and just do the... The, the decent thing and take the virus, I mean, the vaccine. But some people say, Boris, that uh, really Nigel Farage is still pulling your strings behind the scenes. Well, no, 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 let me speak. And that's, that's wonderful to see you, Alec. And I've got to say, it's fantastic to be on the show. Thank you so much. No, 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 let me speak. The thing is, the words we're hearing nowadays, you know, when you think about it, it sounds like the shipping forecast, doesn't it? Schengen, <laughs> migrant, dogger, vaccine, COVID. Who knows what it's about? But the fact of the matter is, you've got to get yourself down to the nearest weather spoons, whether it's open or not, sit outside, down a couple of Sambucas and a flaming Red Bull, <laughs> and have a party wherever you can, within the realm and rule of law. Now, I do wonder, uh, Mr Farage, what, uh, what Ursula von der Leyen might actually think of your view on Europe. And, and let, let's turn to Ursula now. How, what are your feelings towards United Kingdom at the moment? Well, let's just say that the fish are sinking the whole of Brexit. It is the fish that are sinking. It is the fish that are stinking. And in fact, the whole of the Brexit negotiations are rubbish. And Mr. Farage, we now have a Farage garage in your country of Kent. So I think we need to sort out the fish first. And I'm hoping to go in a Bond movie because my hair and I am rather beautiful. And all of this last minute negotiations, is this just a big charade between the, the European Union member states and, and the United Kingdom? Are we going to you get a deal? Remember, you have to remember that we don't like you very much. So we try oh, to be sexy. <laughs> yes, well, shut up, Nigel, while Ursula <laughs> speaks. Speaks. You know, I can't shave my ashes. We know that you are a foolish man, but we have to keep smiling at you like we like you. We don't like you. Well, I'd like to say on behalf of that, I remember when we had the same problem back when, when it was Van Rimpoy. He looked like a... What was he? <laughs> you, you smell like a low... Like a damp rag. You look like a low-grade bank clerk. I mean, who are you? Who are the European leaders anymore? We don't know. We're better out of it and getting on with it. It's what I said all along. No, no, no. Let me speak. Christmas is over. Well, it's not in my house. Bring on the beef bully. <laughs> Surely you're relieved to be rid of... Uh... Nigel Farage uh, from the European Parliament. Isn't that a, a good thing about Brexit? Yes, I am very pleased that he is not around. <laughs> Nobody liked Nigel. And the fish will sink this deal. And he is now with the fishes. He sleeps with the fishes. And on that note, with Nigel Farage swimming with the fishes, that's quite an image. Join us after the break, where we turn to festive television and see what's on this Christmas. Welcome back. Alex and I are in conversation with two people of many voices, Lewis MacLeod and Kate Robbins. Actually, we're in conversation with Shirley and Bruno. Strictly this year, another record audience. Well, it's just been fantastic. And as one, I am the head judge, you know, as I am. It's just been amazing. And we had a great winner, you know, with Bill Bailey. But I think you want to ask us something about Strictly politics, don't you? 
Well, I was just wondering, if you had to, Bruno, judge politicians uh, instead of dancers, I mean, who would, who would shape up well and who, would, who wouldn't fit the bill? Well, I got to say, I mean, I think that, you know, the prime minister has to work on so much. But, it, of course, it, it's all in the presentation. He would get nailed. No point. He's got the hair like a burst sofa. But he's got a nice sachet and he bumbles along the floor. So he might be good at, I don't know, a foxtrot or a foxtrot Oscar. I don't know. But I think that maybe karma... He needs more stamina for karma. He's got a thing about his head. He weighs his head forward. But a lot of talent, not so good on the floor. Well, I'd just like to say, as head judge, I think that Boris Johnson, never mind the Charleston, I think he'd be absolutely great because he is a charlatan. That's what I think. You mean you don't like him? No, I don't. I don't like the man at all. Of course I don't. I'm from the Wirral. And, you know, that man, I can imagine him dancing. He'd have to brush his hair for a start. What a scruffy thing he is. <laughs> I nearly said a swear word then. Now, Shirley, as head judge, how would you, how would you judge the performance of Jacob rees Morgan, Michael Gove? Well, you know, they'd do a very old-fashioned dance, wouldn't they? Jacob Rees-Mogg would probably come in on a penny farthing or something like that, because he likes to pretend he's living in a different century, doesn't he? As for Michael Gove, well, poor thing. Doesn't do much right, does he? Bruno, any, any politicians that you think of will have something to offer in the years to come, or...? Or is it all disaster? Well, I, think, uh, I think you, Taz, I've got to say, you look like a goddess uh, sitting there with your beautiful dress. You would look like an ideal candidate. I'd love to vote saying, seven, nine, there you are. Very good. I think they're all idiots. I think with the exception of maybe Barack Obama, who could just stand still doing a craft work sort of robot dance and talking. Oh. He could say yeah. anything. And I would say, nine, ten, yes. Well, do you know what? I'm going to ask Barack Obama now. What does he think about all that's going on in the terrible world at the moment? And has he got any hope for any of us? Remember this. We are all here to be tried and tested. And Michelle and I, we've been watching from sidelines, but are very much involved. And like judging panels around the world, we are all judging one another. And it's Christmas. We need goodwill. We need to launch from the flames of despair the fountain of joy. That's what we need. We need slight platitudes that you can't quite understand. Moving forward, pouring the golden flakes of change onto the embers of disaster and pain. We and need also, happiness. What, one other thing, Mr. Obama, I'd like to ask you. How are we going to get Donald Trump out of the White House? Well, you know, that's a very good question, and thank you for asking. I want to tell you this. There's, there's many rooms in the White House, and when you go downstairs next to the popcorn machine, just, just beside the, the powwow and the coffee maker, there's a little, there's a little WC, a bathroom, and it's, it's for guests. And if you, if you just go under the seat, there's a little red button there, and it's, it says flush. If he pulls that down, he's going to be launched through the, the skylight straight up to where Elon Musk is right now. And it's, it's going to be exciting. It's, it's going to be, Oh my gosh. Woo. And we've got, and we have paper. There's not, we're not running out of Andrex in the white house. Well, that, that's good to know, given the Brexit shortages and then the, the queues at Dover, but um, let's move on to the climate, a, a big issue and one of grave concern, particularly for our, for our young people is what the future means for them. And I wonder if we might hear from David Attenborough. Well, thank you so much, Taz. And as you can see here, this beautiful vista behind me near Erica, we want to preserve the winter wonderland. And it is why we must be on the hunt for the giant rare orange orangutan, which was last seen near uh, the White House in Washington. Once <laughs> it is contained, we will be able to move on with our plans. Well, Shirley, who would you like to see on the show? As head judge, I'm sure you have a say in who future contestants might be. Who would you like to see dancing before you and Bruno? Well, I think the Queen would be rather good. And I know that she obviously wants you all to stay together as the UK. But I think the Queen would like to say a few words. I would like to say, please put me on strictly. 
one could dance with Philippe all night and one could have the corgis running around at one's feet. It would be lovely. Andrew, get out! <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, Judge Shirley, do you have some tips on some good soaps that we could all be watching over Christmas? Oh, gosh, I don't personally watch the soaps. They're a bit beneath me, if I'm honest. <laughs> but I do remember seeing Sir Ian McKellen in Coronation Street, I think it was. He was rather good. Well, that's right. It takes me back. It's the greatest of soap operas, darling. And the acting is worthy of an appearance from me. And as I have said many times, it is all about the text. Whether you are a wizard, this will not pass. We have to look optimistically, even the messages from Coronation Street. I remember fondly when I played Covidia in Prospero's Mooks, one of the lesser known Shakespearean plays, Prospero's Mooks, and I was Covidia, and this little rascal of a virus will not permeate onto the floor of a studio. Back to the text, everybody. Merry Christmas from me and my darling, Shirley Ballas, wonderful lady, and I look forward to spinning round the hall with you. That's dame to you, love. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Let's move back to the real Kate Roberts and the, the real Lewis McLeod. Thank you so much for that festive roundup, bringing some cheer at a difficult and challenging time for, for everybody around the world. But let's talk first, uh, Kate, to you. You were just recently on the Cube with your, your lovely daughter, Emily Atak, and won £20,000, I think, for charity. How was the experience? Yeah. Well, we were so thrilled. We um, we made £20,000 for the Ben Kinsella Trust, which is uh, tackling knife crime. And I'm a patron of that charity. But we had a great time, a great laugh. Really Lewis McLeod, can you see yourself going on to the, the cube at any point? Would, uh, would that be an ambition of yours? Well, I couldn't really do a Rubik's Cube when I was younger, but um, I'd give it a go if I was asked. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and it's... Uh, Philip Schofield, one of those voices, a slightly higher pitched up Jeremy Vine, but uh, a great show. And I, I saw Kate and Emma on it, wonderful, just brilliant. And, and funny, because we just wrapped up on a wee show that Kate was um, a star of, uh, and they brought back Spit and Image. So to, to share the, the stage, if you, if you like, with Kate, who I love dearly, and have a, an attachment to Spit and Image, which came back, is, is really cool. I was so pleased, Lewis, that you got to get into this latest um, series. And I was in it from the beginning, you know, and, and I was, I'm one of the oldies, but it was so funny because we were earning so much money on that program years ago. We didn't realize that how much it was in the eighties, there was more money going around, you know, and they used to say to us at the end of the show, come on, have you got no second homes to go to? <laughs> it was, it was, we didn't realize how what good we had it and um you know we had to save up all our money because we didn't know we'd we'd be in this situation now with so many performers now um with no work and no um you know i feel for my friends who are in the theater because the you know all the cancelled tours and uh, it, it is a terrible time it's a terrible time for lots of people but i'm just stating the case for artists performing artists and on the spitting image kate just an interesting point the the, the 80s were the characters of the politicians bigger and easier to do or, or do you think current, the current crop are just as easy to lampoon? You know, the, the, the amazing influence of Spitting Image was that young people knew the names of the shadow cabinet. I mean, if you ask a young person the names of any of the cabinet members, they don't even know them, never mind shadow cabinet. It did have a massive influence in the late 80s, early 90s. It had a huge influence, but I think it was the first time anybody had ever seen latex puppets this, you know, sort of grotesque as they were. They could never make beautiful people look good. They never made a good puppet of Princess Diana because she was too beautiful. I think I'm right in saying in lockdown, a lot of creative work has been ongoing. And I think Paul McCartney, your cousin, of course, Kate, just, has just released a lockdown album. He has, yeah. It's lovely, actually. It's really nice. He's um, always creative and always quite... He's quite fit and healthy man for his, for his years. And uh, he's always keeping himself in good shape mentally and physically. And uh, he's always creating, always writing songs, you know. He'll always come up with the goods. And I finally to you both, I mean, as comedians, as comic characters, impressionists, uh, entertainers, I mean, is there a kind of special responsibility on you in these dark times to, to give people something to, to smile about, to, to lift people's spirits? Do, do you feel that as an obligation to you both? 
Yeah, very much so. I mean, I, I had a rotten start to this. Uh, I lost my brother in March, and uh, so we were all kind of grieving. We thought he'd passed through COVID. He had a heart attack, went peacefully. But it was a rotten year. This has been a rotten year. But one of the uh, things that did galvanise, certainly me and my family, we I, I moved back up to Scotland, I guess, for the, for the year, built a small booth that I'm in just now. And I thought, and I know Kate's been doing this as well, we just had to motivate ourselves to get work and do something, help others. Yeah. Um, and it's not about us necessarily, but we are really lucky as comic performers that there are outlets for us um, to, to perform to. I've been doing a thing called the Steph, um, Steph's Pack Lunch, which is on Channel 4, and it's a daily magazine show, but she's allowed lots of comedians to come onto it. To, and it's just been a great show for people showcasing and and just we've just been allowed to do all sorts on there. But Lewis, I know that you are so much happier when you're up the road. <laughs> uh, well, see, I always commuted from London to Glasgow. I always came up at the weekend to see my daughters and, and you know, I, I'm happy doing anything, going where the work is and being where, you know, where, with my friends and whatnot, my family. But this has definitely been a different thing. I see more of my, my kids, which is amazing. And my daughter's 14th birthday yesterday. It was just beautiful being able to spend more time than I would normally. I would normally be going down to London. I'd be racing to the airport. And so it's been it's been really special for that. And, and to be with my mum, especially with my, cat, my brother going and uh, my brother Donald and giving that support. But it's opened up many other things. I can work from home now. I can, I can actually work this Mac thing and uh, send voiceovers to people if they need them or I can do stuff, you know. But there's never been a more important time for comics, has there? I mean, no. we have to, we are here too. We have got to make people laugh in these dark times. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. And it's great that and these Zoom calls, you know, people are getting really smart to it. And I've been, I went to a, an awards do on a Zoom call, uh, the Scottish Music Awards, which is the Nordoff Robbins uh, Music Therapy Awards. They raised over a hundred grand. Um, and we're all at home and we had the bottle of wine. We're sitting watching, our, you know, the bands on, on screen. And it was almost like we were at the venue with our family. Once we got around the configuration of the audio levels, it was six hours we were sat in front of that screen. People will adapt. We, Zoom calls are amazing for bringing people together. Let me say, though, Lewis McLeod bought me the nicest present ever for my birthday a few years ago. He took me to see Barack Obama speak at Edinburgh. Uh, oh, how lovely. But well, that was only because he was perfecting his impression. I, I, I know him from old. <laughs> I, and wants I, to get you, know, you up the road as well, Kate. That, that's what that was all about. <laughs> I, but you know what oh, they did, though? We had a the great hospitality, time. The hospitality at that night was sensational. Can oh, you imagine? The president, oh. the greatest of presidents, was wonderful. And they kept us in that room for about two hours and locked us in so we couldn't go to the loo. <laughs> and everybody had got hammered on champagne and Prosecco. Oh. Mate. <laughs> it was fabulous. So, Lewis and Kate, thank you so much for, for joining us in the show and so many personae and for making us laugh. Oh, cheers, thank Alex. You, thank you. And thank you, Taz. Thanks, Alex. God bless and have a very Merry Christmas. And to all of our viewers, have a wonderful Christmas. And we hope to see you all again for our highlight show on Hogmanay. Stay safe. <laughs>